Hi, my name is Sarita. And my name is Rena. We are both past patients with Mexico Bariatric Center and we are here to break the stigma of having weight loss surgery in Tijuana, Mexico. We will be covering all things bariatric to help you get the most out of this weight loss journey. Hello friends. Hi friends. Happy holidays. Happy holidays and happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving's coming up, right? Our favorite holiday. Listen, you can love food and Thanksgiving, which is usually circled around food, yes. and have surgery and be healthy yes. and lose weight. Yes. It's okay, right? Yes. All of that's okay. All of the above. All of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love Thanksgiving so much. Do you? I do. It's my favorite holiday. Y'all, um, what do y'all do at Thanksgiving? Like, do you do the whole, like, what are you thankful for around the table? Yeah. And then just, you know, a traditional Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we do. We do yeah. the... What's your favorite traditional Thanksgiving thing? Ooh, hash brown casserole. Really? Oh, my favorite is the my mom's sweet potato soup. Oh, well, and my dad's gravy, his turkey gravy. Mm -hmm. well, my dad passed away this year, so I do have his recipe, and I will be able to replicate it. You he has to talked be, me through it before. You get to be the turkey, the turkey yeah. gravy person this yes, year. Yes, I love mm -hmm. his gravy. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try it. Thank you. Make it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Thanksgiving um, dinner, it doesn't have to be stressful, right? No. Yeah. I don't stress over it. Well, maybe a little, but not about food or mm -hmm. um, anything like that. Just like the normal hustle and bustle right. uh, kind of stuff. But um, one of the things that I found like going through, you know, we were at the maintaining uh, yes. part. So, yes. uh, but at one point it was our first Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. Or our last Thanksgiving or whatever. Well, I didn't know I was having Me surgery either. at my last Thanksgiving, <laughs> but I had surgery in February, so nine months later I had Thanksgiving. Yep. And, you know, it was yeah. different. It was Mine was different. in May, so whatever the math is on that, right? So six months, six seven months. months. Um, so, yeah, six months. So, yeah, same thing. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I, wasn't, I didn't have a last Thanksgiving before Me surgery. Either. I did not have a few food funeral, nothing like that. Well, I did that, but not at Thanksgiving. I don't recommend food funerals. No, no. No way, no how. Mm -hmm. um, they made me sick and made me gain weight before surgery, which was not fun at all. Um, but anyway, um, it doesn't have to be stressful in terms of eating if it's your first Thanksgiving after right. surgery. Don't, it don't, don't worry. You got this, right? right. Um, if it's your, if you're going through pre-op. Um, through Thanksgiving, kudos mm -hmm. to you because that has to be uh, difficult. And I think that some of the mm -hmm. bravest people go through pre-op through the holidays. And I think they do that intentionally so they don't yeah. overeat. Yeah, some of them do. Um, yeah, I've had, they know. I've had some of my patients tell me that they are intentionally <clears throat> doing it through the holidays right. to kind of help them. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New yeah. Year's. Yeah. Yes. Those are difficult ones. Sometimes. Yeah, a lot of get-togethers, a lot of food, a lot of alcohol, a lot of high carbs. Yeah. All that stuff. So, so something that both of us do, um, which we both love to cook anyway, right? I love to cook. Me too. Mm -hmm. I, you know sidetrack here but that's me right um my daughter recently moved out and every time she would come home it was like mom what do you need right you know and my, my three of my kids have moved out at this point and they're always like you know i need some of mama's food you know i need you comfort to make food yes and that to me that makes me feel good mm -hmm. right oh i love to cook and meal prep and yeah and uh you know send stuff with my son and my trainer yes i like to cook for everyone and your daughter and i've my been daughter. here when she went home before her yes. car was loaded down yeah. with like a well, whole she, two she's weeks in another food. state so she's yeah. five hours away so yeah she, we have to pack it up good with ice yeah. yeah so so to get back to that um uh we do like to cook both of us mm -hmm. and so um i'm gonna say it makes it really easy when you bring some of your own dishes yes um because that helps take away the mm -hmm. whether or not there will be something to eat right for you so or... you have your own bariatric yeah. friendly food that you know you can eat you mm -hmm. know what the ingredients are you made it right. and you know if somebody else wants to try it and they love it that's that's amazing then you've just shared a healthy right. meal with somebody right. else you shared, so, yeah 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 and so um hang out in the kitchen with us you can already see we're in the kitchen we have some food here mm -hmm. Um, and so hang out with us while we, while we make some things. Yes. 
Um, and we're going to make some yumminess, right? We're going to make a turkey broccoli casserole mm. and pumpkin fluff. Pumpkin fluff. Mm -hmm. Very active friend. Yes. And Serena makes this chicken broccoli casserole, the, mm -hmm. the turkey broccoli, the chicken all the time. And it's so good. Yeah. It's actually one that you can meal prep year round. Oh, yes. I'm not a meal prepper, but I do meal prep this dish. So I substituted turkey because it's Thanksgiving, but right. normally I will get a um, chicken from like Sam's Club or Costco and, you know, rotisserie chicken and do it that way. But I wanted to do a spin on Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, which it's going to be good. I can't wait. It's actually going to be our lunch today, yes, so be. we're going to eat what we cook. Yes. Um, and then um, I want to say, too, um, Sarita, uh, we, it is possible to tweak mm -hmm. your own recipes. If you yeah. have a favorite recipe that, I mean, maybe your mom gave it to you or just something mm -hmm. you've always made, you can tweak that. You can right. uh, substitute high-fat things for low-fat mm -hmm. or... Um, like I would substitute sour cream and use, um, uh, Greek yogurt. Yeah. Can't even tell. No. And it's yeah. healthier. That's one that comes to my mind. Yeah. Because if I make enchiladas with the low carb tortillas for the sauce, I can use the yogurt instead of sour cream. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. I mm -hmm. can't think of me. And stevia. I want to plug stevia right. because stevia is a great sweetener when you mm -hmm. are doing sugary things. Right. So, um, anyway. Uh, let's let's talk about before we get into the food part, right? Um, what are some things like uh, emotionally? Like what are like? So look at? I mean, of course, when you have Thanksgiving get-togethers, it's a great time to see your family and friends you haven't seen for a while, maybe. Right. And it can be overwhelming. Can. Um, it's exciting to show off the new you. Mm -hmm. And there may be questions, so you need to maybe think about that, anticipate questions. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, going to like close family functions mm -hmm. was easy for me because close family knew mm -hmm. that I had surgery and they yeah, see like me every day. Your and uncle and aunt or cousins yeah, or those like out of state relatives, yes. the ones you only see at the holidays. Right. And friends too. And friends. Mm -hmm. Friends that maybe you don't see regularly. Right. And definitely don't stress about it, no. but anticipate those questions so that you don't get blindsided. And so we'll kind of help you with um, things that we've been asked or we've seen mm -hmm. other people say that they struggled with being asked. Um, and so we'll kind of go over some of those that kind of help you. But like I said, don't stress over what we're saying about it. Just right. uh, kind of go ahead and have an idea in right. mind of like how you're going to respond. Because um, right. you definitely want to have a good time at your get together yeah. and not stress over, oh no, what if somebody asks me questions? But right. just keep it in the back of your mind that it could happen. Yeah, for sure. And they do because you and some of us, listen, we don't care. We want to show off our, our new us. Our new, mm -hmm. um, maybe you've, you're, maybe you're like really excited to show off like your new sin self, right? right. But yeah. uh, some of us get nervous about that. So. Right. And we, um, we feel like we, you know, they might judge us yeah. or, you know, give us some backlash from our decision. And, you know, we, we shouldn't have to defend our health choices. Never. Like why we did surgery for our health. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. One of my favorite things, if I'm done talking to you, like if I don't think you're listening and, or, or you're really hearing what you want to hear mm -hmm. I just stop talking like mm -hmm. I just don't talk. I just turn the conversation somewhere else or just stop responding to right. you change the subject right I don't know I'm I guess I'm pretty good at that but um, one of the biggest questions that I get is how are you losing weight mm -hmm. um, and so some people don't mind saying hey I had weight loss surgery mm -hmm. some people don't want people to know that they had weight loss surgery and some people have a group that they tell and a group that they don't want to tell. Right. There's select um, friends and family that know yeah. and some that don't know. I'm almost seven years out, so I don't get that question anymore. But in the beginning I did, and I kind of said, oh, I'm eating more protein and eating less of other things. And I'm yeah. exercising, which is not a lie. I was doing all of that. Yeah, my answer to that question was smaller portions, yeah, which is not a lie. portions and more protein. That's not a lie. No. I omitted mm -hmm. the surgery, but um, mm -hmm. I had told the truth. I was eating smaller portions. Right. And then I'll tell a random stranger, oh, hey, I had surgery. Yeah. Like if I go out to eat and they're yeah. like, was something wrong with your food? Nope. 
I remember the first time uh, we both went out to eat and you're like, hey, we had surgery. We're just going to share this, okay? <laughs> and then she wanted to know, our server wanted to know more about the surgery and we gave her the name of the company. And, we did. Yeah, so. A true story. You know, that's a true yeah. story. True story. And some people, maybe you are um, just right after surgery, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you're far enough out that you're eating normal food, right? Mm -hmm. But you haven't really... Um, or maybe you're like in the broth phase or you're in yes. the, any of those first phases mm -hmm. or you're just not far enough out that your weight loss is noticeable. super noticeable, right? right? It's usually pretty noticeable in that first month. They do notice that you're eating less. They will notice that they you're eating less. less. Well, less of them. hopefully they don't, but they might. They might. Some yeah. people will. And it's okay. So they'll say, hey, why are you not here? Are you okay? You know, like, are you? I have a stomach bug. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you don't you have could, to lie. You could I mean, you I'm eating less, right? Yeah. Yeah. Smaller portions, watching right. my my weight, you know, right. whatever. Yeah, my, um, just, yeah. That is one of the big questions. Just think about how you would answer it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And so another question that is super common, if you tell people you had surgery is, where did you have surgery? Mm -hmm. Why did you have surgery? I had surgery out of network. At a network. <laughs> that, that's a good answer. Um, and some people may be super supportive of your decision to have surgery until they know where you had surgery. Yes. Right? And so you have to. But then it's like, well, I'm here and I'm, you know, I survived the surgery and everything was great. Mm -hmm. Which helps you break that stigmatism because right. here you are, right. perfectly healthy mm -hmm. and losing weight and you've gone to Mexico and you have all your other organs and, right? Because... People say things like that, and do. Um, maybe those things happen at other facilities, but not at Mexico Bariatric, right? Yeah. So, um, you could be a testimony to um, going to Mexico being a good thing. Right. Um, so, use that and you make it yours. Whatever your answer is, just right. make it yours. Just know that those are common questions. And again, back to that backlash, um, you know, not just about going to Mexico, but just about having surgery. Right. Um, Sarita actually has a story of people saying things to her like, you didn't need to do that, or you oh, could yeah. try harder. Or... It, long after I had surgery, well, I didn't tell anyone I had surgery, but, <laughs> oh, you didn't need to do that. Why did you do that? It was my, it's for me, it's mm -hmm. for my health. And I've heard it too. So, uh, you know, I've said to people, or people have said to me, I should say, um, why... Did you have surgery? Why didn't you just try harder? Right. Um, well, so, I tried for 20 years. Yeah, same. Well, really hardcore for nine years. So, right. like, really hardcore. Like, yeah. gym, nutrition. Yeah. Um, wouldn't budge. Medication. <laughs> like, no, it wouldn't budge. Yeah. Well, it did. It was doing something because then when I did the food, for, food funeral thing, I did gain some weight. But, yeah. um, anyway, so just make those, make it yours. But right. just know those are some very common questions um and so what we all came here for right yes the food. food yeah the food the food um again it is okay to love food and be healthy mm -hmm. it is okay to um enjoy food and be mm -hmm. healthy yes and so um we can tell you that that is our um testimony in terms of that but uh just let's go over some like little reminders some little tips yes. and um, so what would you say is like the, like the number one thing? I would say the number one thing is to get your protein in first, which yeah. is something you should be doing anyway yeah. at every meal. That's your um, everyday life. Right. It should be. And have a spoonful, not a plateful. Yep. Just a spoon. No, not of the protein, but of the other things. Yeah. Have your normal amount right. of protein. And we'll get into how much is normal right. at what phase right. in a minute. But, um... Yeah, a spoonful. And we don't mean like a serving Ooh, size look, a spoon. spoon. Yes. This is a teaspoon. Like Not just a, a serving taste. spoon. Right. Um, so <laughs> a tiny spoonful. A bite. A bite. Have a bite. A of small everything. bite. Yes. Maybe two bites. If it's two small bites, right? Right. Um, but don't, don't have a big glop. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, watch the carbs. That's yes, my super carbs. tick is watch my super tip. Sorry, is watch carbs because yes. uh, in my own experience in the past six years, what I've learned is that um, carbs lead to more carbs. Mm -hmm. Having some carbs leads to wanting more carbs, right. and then next thing you know, you have a sugar addiction or a pasta or rice or 
you know, yeah, you want yeah. all those things, right? And then you have to do like this whole really hard thing to your body where you have to make it stop. And right. um, I don't want you to go through that. Also, if you're doing really well not having carbs, because mm -hmm. um, carbs are like sugar in our body, right? They are. And you're not having carbs and sugar, and then you do eat them, um, it can give you upset stomach. Yeah, your tummy and, will not like it. Right. And so we don't want you trying to enjoy Thanksgiving right. with an upset stomach right. and run into the bathroom and right. feeling miserable, mm -hmm. right? So, Speaking of feeling miserable. Yeah, stop when you feel full. Yeah. Do, do not that. take that extra bite because you will be miserable. Yeah, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Some people's nose runs when they're full. I get the hiccups. So. Some people, yes, you do. I I've, do. I've seen you hiccup. Yes. Um, I burp when I'm full. I don't burp. When I the burps up. come, I know I'm done. My nose used to run in the beginning, but not anymore. Yeah, I don't think it's changed for me. I've never gotten hiccups when I'm full, but uh, oh, I've do. done the nose run thing in the past, and now I burp. When I get full, I start, I, I can burp like nobody's business, right? Not like I, I've, I've seen her and heard her burp. Yeah, <laughs> when you get comfortable with somebody. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> So, um, another thing too that helps me is that, and I didn't even, it's not intended, but maybe for you, you could intend on having it, mm -hmm. is accountability person. Um, mm -hmm. When I go to eat with my family and I've made my plate, um, if I just think something's really good or maybe I fix a little more than I should have and I'm eating it, my kids will be like, hey mom, uh, you're going to be sick later. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, you don't want to do that. So mm -hmm. if you're like new to this, mm -hmm. um, then and you're, maybe you're married, your partner, your spouse, your child, your friend, whoever is with you that knows about your journey, supposing that you have someone with you, um, say to them, hey, if you see me overeating or overindulging, can you just kind of nudge me, text me? Slap that spoon um, out of my hand. <laughs> you know, I want to say my daughter's done that before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to say that okay. thing, but okay. Probably as a joke, but you know. So um, my daughter had surgery three months ago today, right? or almost. Seem yeah. Like it's been that long. So we are we we are our accountability person. Like she she'll be um, like should you be having that? <laughs> and and I'll um, you know she'll ask me can I have this? So she's yeah. watched me for almost seven years. Yeah. So and and she sees you know I still weigh my food and meal prep and do my protein yep. and. Yeah, so she's she's hit me up with the with that too, like um, mm -hmm. hmm, you know, because I post a lot of food that I'm eating and mm -hmm. stuff, and so yeah. When I was posting healthy things, she's like, "Oh yeah, there you go." Mm -hmm. So I like her encouragement. New people to surgery, they do help you so much because yeah, it's exciting to see their mm -hmm. uh, learning phases. Right, right, it is. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Um, so some samples um, for Thanksgiving dinner, and Sarita is so much better at this because she does the nutrition with us, right? Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, so if you're in pre-op phase, what's like a good, where do you start in pre-op? So, oh, I so, I did that. <laughs> so if you're in pre-op, you know, focus on, I'm going to say most people have turkey. I would stay away from the ham. It's not very lean, but I would do, you know, you do your turkey four to seven ounces. Um, you can have unlimited non-starchy vegetables. Um, some examples of a side, you can do mashed cauliflower, mm -hmm. cauliflower stuffing without garlic. And we do have a recipe on, on our, website. our website that yeah. looks amazing. We'll add that link. I have not made it yet. Um, We're going to try it though, because it yeah. looks so good. A uh, green bean casserole without garlic and breadcrumbs. I've never made mine with breadcrumbs. Me either. So, Me either. you know, just keep that The in recipe mind. to the specific uh, green bean casserole that we're referring to is in the, uh, also on our right. website. Because yeah. some green bean casseroles call for like dairy. So, they do. Free up, yeah. just so watch tweak that. it. Tweak it. Yeah. I do it all the time. Yep. Um, if you are post op, you're going to have limited choices in phase, phase one. one. Broth. <laughs> turkey broth. <laughs> turkey broth. Turkey broth. Hey, it, turkey broth might give you a break from right. the other broth you've been drinking. Right. And that's going to be in that, that first five right. to seven days. So yeah. if you're one of those people who braved surgery Thanks. the week before Thanksgiving and you are in that Just know you're having turkey phase, broth. You're having turkey broth for right. Thanksgiving dinner, right? And, yes. If you're in the post-op phase two, something you might be able to try would be thinned mashed cauliflower. Yeah. 
which is really good. And mm -hmm. you can thin it with some turkey broth. You could thin it with I was I, I was gonna say, what would you thin that with? Yeah, turkey broth. I, I tell here patients thinking. all the time, thin it with broth. Yeah. It, you don't really you don't use idea. a whole bunch and it doesn't overpower the dish. That's true. That's yeah, true. So. That actually sounds really good. It does. I love cream cauliflower. I think we should have some mashed cauliflower. Yeah, and now if you're in post op um, phase three. Oh you where would, are we at that? So the in phase three is when you can try the soft the nibbling. Turkey. Yeah. Yes. But I would definitely definitely start measuring your food in this phase. So I would measure out maybe two to three ounces and see how much you can get in. Okay. Um, you can do um, mashed vegetables, like make sure they're very well cooked. You know, listen, if Aunt Betty Jo or Barbara Jean or um, Barbara Jean. <laughs> whoever, if, they're, if, if Uncle John's turkey is like just really dry, oh, um, yeah. that and you're in phase three, uh, you might have to skip that because yeah, you might and just focus on vegetables. Yeah, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to set you up for failure there. And if mm -hmm. you're in phase three and you haven't, like, especially the first part of phase three, mm -hmm. and you haven't experienced with meat yet, that's true. Some really dr listen. I've had some really gross dry turkey. So, okay. So I would say if you're gonna try turkey in phase. three, Three and have it and go for the dark meat because it has more juicy moisture and maybe add some you know, broth broth to it if it's available. Sometimes yeah. you know you don't want to be like, hey, Uncle John, you got some or, broth or bring your, your own broth. Turkey. Yeah, you know, bring your own. Bring a bullion cube or broth right. packet. And right, you can just kind of secretly yeah. mix it up and put it on but there. Definitely maybe. start with dark meat because it's, it's a moisture; yeah. it's not as dry. Or just skip it. And if you really don't want people to know you had surgery, you could just be like, oh, my stomach's not feeling well. Right. Which, would not technically be a lie, right? right? Because it's probably it an angry at you. So yeah, if you, you know, for sure if you um, are in that phase three, just, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of plan and prepare, listen, reach out to us and we can maybe mm -hmm. talk with you on like an individualized right. um, basis about what might be available because some of us don't do traditional Thanksgivings. Right. Maybe we do spaghetti Thanksgivings or mm -hmm. something crazy. Like some people do that, okay? I've done lasagna. Yeah. Whatever works, right? right? Whatever works. Um, especially if you have multiple family get togethers mm -hmm. to go to. Some right. people are like, listen, we've already had this all of this dinner. ten times. Right. Let's do something different. Um, and so you're talking about the turkey and lemon. So what are some other vegetables? Like what specifically, like if you were going to dinner, what would you take with you? If um, I was going to Thanksgiving traditional. Um, I would do something with broccoli or cauliflower mm -hmm. if you were in phase three if i was in phase three it'd be very well cooked broccoli or like a mashed cauliflower mm -hmm. um i love cauliflower and broccoli mm -hmm. i could eat it every day i'm thinking of like some really soft carrots okay you know that's what i had okay. in mind um i guess it could be like anything but i was thinking like some i was thinking like some really soft carrots would probably be that would good. be good too yeah. And then, um, so just again, try to eat your protein first, mm -hmm. unless it's like super dry, gross turkey. Right. And you just, and it's okay if you miss protein that meal, you can have it, some later in the day. Yeah. Yeah. You, go home. you can start over again mm -hmm. with that. Right. Um, and then, so if you're in phase four, um, especially if you are like way into phase four, if you're just in that first week of phase four, um, I would still be really careful. Be careful if you have an mm -hmm. experience with certain things yeah, right. like because turkey and you're that. only supposed to try one new thing at a time and right. you don't want to go to someone's house and try all these things you've never had and then not feel well could you imagine going to somebody's house and trying all these new things and getting the foamies Ooh, no you, but you know like okay so what are foamies right so some of you may not know what foamies are foamies happen when you overeat mm -hmm. so if you have eaten um more food than you should mm -hmm. it will or can potentially, I should foam say, up. start f coming up as a foam. And it is. I never really had it gross. happen to me, but she has. I did. <laughs> and it was with watermelon. Um, so my surgery was in May. Watermelon in the South is like big thing in the summer. So here we are. It's hot weather. The whole family's having some <laughs> nice, cool watermelon. And watermelon is very liquidy. So I don't think you realize how much of it you eat until it's too yeah, late. It's a lot of water. 
Right. And also, I was working with my mom, and so I wasn't really paying attention. I'm just eating flour and the next thing I know, it was like, oh, what is that? <laughs> it scared me, because I had never heard of it before. Sweet. It was pink from the watermelon. Oh. It was not great. Not great. No. Um, I never so, had that. I'm okay. It's good. I don't ever want to have that either. Warning. Yes. We have warned you. Yes. Just now you know. So um, uh, some of my things, so if you're like beyond and you're in maintenance phase, some of my favorite things, I love a root cleanse. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of different because it's like sweet potatoes, chopped like up, sweet potatoes. cubed up, right? Yeah. Cubed up sweet potatoes, cubed up butternut squash. Mm -hmm. That is the name of that squash, right? The long yes. one. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, butternut squash cubed up, uh, acorn squash cubed mm -hmm. up. You could even do some winter squash. Up. Yeah, if you can mm -hmm. cube, cube up some carrots in it. I personally like throw an onion in it. I put onion mm -hmm. in like everything. Yeah. Um, and then roast it. Oh, I love roasted. Oh, it's so good. I roast like everything. I, I, love ro it. I roast. In my air fryer? Air fryer. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at right there. It's so easy yeah. too. So I love that root plan. It's also to me a very hearty fall yeah. um, dish to mm -hmm. take that roasted root vegetables. Mm -hmm. And it's different. If you want to do something different, do it's that. It's colorful. It is very colorful. It's very fall. Yeah. You know, some I haven't done is added bro Brussels sprouts to that, but I'm thinking that might be okay too. I like roasted Brussels I sprouts. I love roasted Brussels. Mm -hmm. I make them all the time. I roast them with mm -hmm. cauliflower. I roast them by themselves. Mm -hmm. And you can flavor them so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, but just playing with salt and pepper. Oh, yeah. Extra virgin um, olive oil and salt and pepper. Yeah. That's it. Very I love, simple. Mm -hmm. I love Brussels. Um, so that's some of my favorites. What are your favorite vegetables? Um, Broccoli and cauliflower. <laughs> yeah. I like, I can eat them every day. Like, yes. those are my absolute favorite. Oh, I do like sweet potatoes. Yeah, I think Brussels are not every day. Brussels, broccoli, and cauliflower gets eaten broccoli, at my house more than yeah, anything. Yeah, broccoli every day. And you know, the funny thing is with my kids, you can't put cheese on the broccoli. Now, I don't. I did one time. Mm. My kids were like, I don't know what you did to the broccoli, but don't ever do it again. That was gross. I do a brown butter broccoli. It's an Italian recipe. Mm -hmm. Very good. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Sounds really good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let's talk about like you we've talked about the meat and vegetables but mm -hmm. there's that other thing at thanksgiving dinner that everybody always has that is a big hunk of carb mm -hmm. and it's stuffing mm -hmm. um so listen if you have a bite like okay of, again again a bite literally a bite yes it's okay um i will tell you that if you haven't experienced with breads yet, they fill you up very quickly. And they might feel stuck. And you might feel very bloaty. You might feel like a big rock in your stomach. You, and, and you could be bloated. Just be careful. Yeah. Okay? Um, if you are in the maintenance phase and you know that you can eat pastas and breads on occasion, just keep in mind that um, carbs can lead to wanting more carbs. Yes. Um, go down that dangerous path. Yeah, just... It's a slippery slope. It is a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. I've been on it. Yeah. I've been on it. Yeah. And um, so, again, peek that recipe for that cauliflower stuff, and I'm definitely going to try it myself. I'm going to try it out. Um, we, ac we actually both just found it today. Yeah. I don't know how we didn't know before, mm -hmm. but um, shout out to our awesome nutritionist for that, mm -hmm. and we are both going to try that out. Maybe yeah. we can try it together. Um, so now we have all this food here. So um, let's make some casseroles, Rita. You want to tell us about it? Okay. So normally I do a chicken broccoli casserole, but I decided to switch it up and do a shredded turkey casserole with the broccoli. And so I I went to the store and got a turkey breast boneless and cooked it and shredded it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to mix up today. So I, She's going to make it. I'm, I'm going to eat it. I literally make this all the time with chicken, and, like, I have memorized the ingredients. I have pre-measured everything out here on the counter, and um, so I'm just going to throw everything in this mixing bowl, and I'll tell you what, what the rest the uh, recipe is. So we're going to start with a cup and a half of shredded turkey. Normally it's chicken, but we're doing turkey. And then, that. Okay. Oh. and then we are going to add to that two cups of steamed broccoli. I use fresh broccoli. I don't use frozen. 
I like to use organic tea. Okay, but anyway, listen, I'm the one that brought the frozen she, laundry. I made her go back to the store to get fresh. She did. So here we are. I steamed it. So we're going to throw mm, that on top. It so good. And then um, we use a tablespoon of mayonnaise and a teaspoon of garlic powder and then some salt and pepper. So basically, I am going to add that to the half a cube of cream cheese. And I'm going to mix that. Give me a minute. Yes, the cream cheese, you want at room temperature so it um, will mix really well. Oh yeah. I usually, if I know I'm making something like that, I'll set my cream cheese out like the night before, right? Do you do that? Like set it out the well, night before? Yeah, and so it's cold right here, or cold here right now, so it is cold. I popped it in the microwave for about 30 seconds to get a little bit softer. Yeah. I wouldn't normally cook in a sweater. Do you usually cook in a sweater? No, I don't cook in a sweater. I don't either. And I would probably usually have my hair pulled up and if I'm making right. food to take to a um, guest uh, facility, like a guest place. You know, right. And I wear an apron and yeah. gloves. And, you know, I do all that too. So I'm going to add the tablespoon of mayonnaise to this. We're just cooking this for ourselves. And here. I'm going to add the spices. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to mix that really good. It's so easy to make. And it's like, I don't know, six, seven ingredients, six. It is super easy and it's so tasty. Yeah, it's really tasty. tasty. All right. And so I am going to add this to the broccoli and the turkey. Oh, hold that. I don't have my spoon holder. Are you done with it? I am. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to mix this up really well. And usually when um, you are mixing this, you know, the broccoli will still be warm, the chicken will still be warm, or excuse me, the turkey or chicken. So it mixes up really well. And then we will add some cheese. Mm, now, hold on. You got to talk about your cheese here because some things that people don't know is that if you oh, don't yes. know this, talk you're going to learn cheese. today, right? Right. Um, so sh bagged shredded cheese has more carbs. Yes. Um, because it is coated in like a flour. Right. Um, to help keep its shape and not like and, and, and mesh together. Yes. Um, and so fresh self-grated cheese mm -hmm. is always better and if you don't have a cool little like boop, 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 like in a live garden i was gonna say get one she has one I have two. and uh well she has two i need I to get three. one of those because i have the old-fashioned grate you know and you try not to get the nick your tips of your fingers and that kind of stuff but um anyway if you don't have one of those get you one and make your own cheese if you really want to go with the whole like lighter on the carbs thing yes um, i grade all my cheese i i grew up that way and i started to use bag cheese and then i found out about what she just did yep it's healthier i'll be honest with you i don't always grate my own cheese because you know well it's easy not to but yeah so we are going to Put this in a casserole dish. This is a half a recipe. Yep. So I just total it. transparency. We got half in love. Right. We're like magic cooking show here. Yeah. We're, so we're trying our hand at a cooking show here. It says to we, spray. We should do that. We should. Yeah. Do that. It says to spray the pan, but I use Lake Creuset, so I never spray. It never sticks, and it cleans up really well. Lake Creuset. I use Lake Creuset cookware or bakeware cookware, all that. So anyway, you're just going to put it in here and hold that. Yes. And we are going to sprinkle the rest of the cheese on top. I probably, I probably used eight ounces of cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little more cheese, but, you know, yeah. health and, you know, things so, like that. So this is going to go in the oven at 375 for 15 minutes. Because basically you're just getting everything warmed up. Then it will go on the broil setting for about five minutes. 
Awesome. Yeah. So we will stick this in the oven. Yep. In a minute. In a minute. Because the other one will be ready in a few minutes. Right. So while we wait on it to finish, um, we can talk about dessert. Let's talk about dessert. Dessert. That was the main course. Main course. Um, and that's something you can take. If you take that yourself, you know you have a healthy dish to eat. Right. 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 Um, and the uh, nutri nutritional guide for that is actually on the recipe. So uh, we can maybe post that. Too. I have actually posted the recipe on our recipe group. You but have. I can repost it so it will um, oh. come up to the top with a Thanksgiving okay. recipe. Plug. We have a recipe group for NBC. We do. So if you're not on it, get Join. on it and share yes. your favorite recipes with us because yes. we do love right. trying new things, right? We do. Um, and so getting into that dessert, right? What can you do for dessert? dessert? Now, if you go on our blog and you type in desserts um, on our website, there are a couple of blogs with dessert recipes. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So definitely check that out. They are bariatric friendly. Um, dessert recipes and I want to say you can find both pre and post op things on there. Yeah um, So let's talk about a couple of them. There is protein fluff or pumpkin fluff right. um, so This they're made a little different, but you could do either one of those. So I'm gonna do the protein. No the pumpkin fluff right uh, today and then um, It's super easy and then there is the um, protein Bomb bites, protein bite bombs, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, those are made with like chocolate and peanut butter, um, different things, recipes on there. Check it out. Right. A berry crumble. Oh, I love berry crumble. I make a berry crumble. I love a berry crumble. What do you put in your berry crumble? Do you know off the top of your head? Yeah, so I, of course, berries. And yeah. then I use the high protein oats with Kodiak, and mm -hmm. I use real butter. And you can use a sugar substitute, like you know, brown sugar substitute. Mm -hmm. And so you put your berries, you know, and then put the topping on top and pop it in the oven. It's very good. Pretty much exactly how I do I that. love all yeah. berries. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I use different oat, but um, whatever I have or whatever is available. But it's, I love it. It's so good. Um, the high tea, of course the high protein oats is going to be better. Yeah. And, and, and Kodiak has a good brand of, you know, high protein oats. They do. Mm -hmm. You know, they do a whole bunch. Um, and so, some other recipes that I saw for desserts on our page was um, coconut cookies. Yum. I want to try those. Yeah. They looked really good. I like yeah. coconut stuff, though, but mm -hmm. I don't like raw shaved coconut, but right. I like especially a toasted coconut. Right. I love that. Um, and I also saw stick, uh, snickerdoodle cookies on uh, our website, so that looked really good. Do you like snickerdoodle? I do. Do you really? Mm -hmm. I think the word's kind of funny. It is. We made them as kids, but of course they were regular snickerdoodles. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good holiday cookie. It is. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people like them. I think they probably, I haven't made them, so I can't say, but I would like mm -hmm. to think they'd probably taste like snickerdoodles, and people won't know they're eating healthy cookies. Right. You're helping the whole family. Right. <laughs> Nobody will know. Don't Nobody even tell them. Know. Just say, here, have a snickerdoodle. Yeah. Listen, I want to I wanna say this word real quick. Um, I tried to make this sugar-free pecan pie one time. That does not sound good. It was not. It does not sound good at all. It was so gross. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I will say there are some things you can't, I don't know. We cannot substitute, especially was, living in the South. We cannot. We, we, it was made with like, um, what was it made with? I don't even remember. It was like, it was definitely pre-surgery. So it was like 15 years or more ago. That was really mm -hmm. gross. I would say if you really want some pecan pie, just have a bite. Just have a bite. Because a bite. again, living in the Not South, a spoonful. you know, that's a staple. It is a staple. Dessert. It is. I don't really like pecan pie, so that mm -hmm. might have had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not my favorite, but... Yeah. You know what's really funny? I like... This is also not bariatric friendly, but I like pinto bean pie. Mm -hmm. And so when you that. look at it, it look if you've never had it, is it just reach out. I'll help you out there. Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like a okay. pecan pie, but it's made with pinto beans. Is it sweet? Yeah. Okay. It is. It's like, it's like, 
I used to take, so, um, I've never heard of that. Yeah. Ever. So, um, the, uh, my husband's grandmother actually made it and she thought it was like the funniest thing. And she's like, Hey, try this pie. She brought it to like a family event. Mm -hmm. I want to say Thanksgiving actually. And so everybody's like, Oh yeah, it's good. And like, granny made a pecan pie. Right. And then she's like, it's a mystery pie. And then we're like, oh, <laughs> and so then come to find out. It was made with pinto beans, and mm. it's so, it was so okay. good. You can't taste the pinto beans. I wouldn't even say it was made with pinto beans. I was like, here's some pie. Yeah. It's a that's secret what she family did. recipe. That's what she did to start with. And so when she told everybody it was made with pintos, everybody was like, what? You know? And so then I picked that up from her, mm -hmm. and then I was taking it to family, other family okay. events I'm gonna and friends. I'm going to have to that up. It is so good. Again, not bariatric friendly. It's made with lots of sugar. Oh. Maybe we could tweak it though. Yeah, with sugar substitute. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. We'll try it and see. Yeah. Um, but uh, that was fun. Have you ever had like a dessert fail like that? Uh, yes. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I've had fails. I've had a lot of fails, but you know what? That's yeah, how you learn. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is how you learn. Yeah. For sure. I know that I will never ever attempt another take on pie. This mm -mm. is not for me. Mm -mm. Not for okay, so I'm going to make pumpkin fluff, right? Ooh. I like it. So the recipe for this was not bariatric friendly, but again, tweaking the recipe. Tweak the recipe. Um, so now pumpkin, and this is my favorite brand, pumpkin. And this is not pumpkin pie filling. It is 100% pure pumpkin. Make sure of that. Mm -hmm. um, so this um, does have some sugar. So looking at the label, it has, I want to say five, yeah, five grams What's of sugar. What's your serving size? You're gonna eat like a spoonful of this. Right. So like, you're not gonna get any it's sugar. It's probably like if you ate a gram of all sugar. of this, then you would have five grams of sugar, but it's not possible to eat that's a lot. I mean you might I guess you could over a period of time, mm -hmm. but I would say you're probably not gonna do that. And so also, um the jello, right? Um instant jello. You're gonna put a pack of that in there. I prefer Cool Whip brand. I have tried using a non-Cool Whip brand zero sugar before. Talk about failed. Uh, I didn't actually like the way it folded in and mixed up. I've never tried that. We're going to try this today. It's okay. different than the other one I tried, so hopefully it works out. Um, and then pumpkin pie spice. It says to use a teaspoon. I'm not a measurer of things. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not. Some things you do need to measure. But these are the kind of things that you put think you just you just know you just flavor it yeah. right you just do it to your to your taste so um we'll start mixing that and i am the keeper of time on that casserole which has about one more minute okay so, by the way we are so, going to switch it to the bowl. i can't wait to eat that so excited so this is so super easy um for our family functions we make it every fall we actually make it at halloween thanksgiving mm -hmm. Yep, and um, my daughter makes it. That's how easy it is. She's not going to put a lot of effort into many things, right? Four ingredients. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy. Um, I've actually made it without adding the pumpkin pie spice and just put some cinnamon in it. Mm. I it's mean, super easy. Pumpkin pie spice is like cloves, cinnamon, and nutmeg, yep. right? That's all. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Because oh, and it has ginger. It oh, has oh, spice. ginger, ginger, yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you know, sometimes I just throw some cinnamon in it if I don't have the mm -hmm. pumpkin pie spice. You know, it's not that important, really. It's just about the flavor, and it's gonna taste good either way. So with this, you just add, you just dump it in. So easy. So super easy. Nothing big to it, and then I just mix it all up. Mix, 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 right? Why don't you tell me about one of your fails? One of my fails? Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. I can't think of a recent one. Mm. I mean, what you know, I've been cooking for a long time. Yeah. I'll be 60 in nine days. The thing about fails, though, is like as you, as you grow, um, if you're not a cooker and you want to start cooking more, mm -hmm. as you grow in your cooking, you learn how to alternate fails integrate things right 
Right. Um, so a lot of times you can, this is going to be loud. Oh, I will talk about something I did just a couple weeks ago. It was a recipe I got out of a guy from TikTok. And he makes it seem so easy. It's like 30 seconds and it's done, right? Yes. This thing took me all day. It was horrible. That's all I have to say. I like a little extra flavor. Yeah. So, so that was oh, my most this recent, recent fail. What was it? It well, it, it was it was a baked potato, and it had it, which of course that's not very very after friendly. But <laughs> the other ingredients in it were chicken and broccoli and cheese, and so and um, sour cream and uh, onion soup mix. Oh. So you put that in the potato. It took me all day to get everything together. Yeah. But anyway, it was, and he just did it like magic. Yeah, right? he in thirty seconds his dish was video done. magic. Yeah, so it was not good. Video magic. Yeah, even my son did not like it. Really? You know what I did recently that I know we're like not supposed to do, but I did it because every once in a while it's okay to do things outside of the norm. You just have to be careful. Is I made a barbecue sweet. I mean, not sweet potato. Barbecue potato. So like oh. pulled pork potato. Okay. Yeah, it was really. Really good. So, nice. so, you know, sometimes if you're feeding other people in your family, yeah, it was like, family. they could eat the potato, they could eat the, you know, protein part or the vegetable part. So, yeah, that's how, you know, when my son was living here at home, I would um, do things like that because I knew he would like it. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. It smells good. <sighs> so, let's fold it in. Okay. Yeah. Listen, fold it in. Let's see how this goes. It doesn't seem as thick. That was the problem I had with the other one. Oh, you mean the, the cool, cool whip? whip. It's oh. not seeming as thick as like the cool whip brand. Oh. Well, and uh, make sure you get the zero sugar. It looks thick. Right. Um, it doesn't seem as thick, but it's also super thought out. You do want to make sure it's thought out. It's hard to fold in. Um, Frozen cool whip, but um, yeah, that would be let's good. fold all this in here and see what happens because let's do this. It smells good, it is. I and love now, pumpkin. if you're serving it to the crowd, oh. right, you can serve it with like graham crackers, mm -hmm. vanilla wafers. You can have like a dip, yeah, you can make a dip, yep. Oh, so, you could do like um, put that in a bowl and put the other stuff around it like a charcuterie. You right? could, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's implied you would use graham crackers or whatever. Yeah, but you know, as uh, somebody who doesn't really need to eat the graham crackers, just eat it like a moose. It's kind of like a moose, right? Okay. Yep. So right behind. Oh, hold on. Ooh, I feel the heat. Ooh. The heat is on. This is, this is folding in. I am loving it. I'm so super excited about having this. Actually, I'm more super excited about having that turkey broccoli and casserole. Yes, we have honest. our finished product here. Ooh. This is what it should look like. Yep. Uh, yeah. So looks good. I like to brown it a lot on top because I like... Uh, did you tell them that you did that or was I talking? No. We put it on broil for five yeah. minutes after you have cooked it for 15 minutes at 275. Yep. Oh, y'all look at this. Oh yeah, look at that. It's like, Ooh. oh yeah, Looks almost good. there, almost there. And protein fluff is kind of like the same thing, right? So with protein fluff, um, you pretty much do the same thing, um, except for you'll mix your protein shake with the pudding. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what makes it the protein. Mm -hmm. And then you fold it in with the Cool Whip. Right. Um, so that's really good too. Yeah, you can make all kinds of different um, this is so good flavors I smell it i smell, I smell all this it. food i haven't eaten anything yet today i did i actually had egg bites from starbucks breakfast i had coffee yep espresso i eat every three hours right so small meals every couple hours mm -hmm. you're not supposed to go all day without eating sarita it's almost three o'clock i have not get her y'all today get her y'all i was waiting on this well, we were a little behind, so yeah, we were. it's okay. We got this. Okay, I'm going to stop mixing and wipe my fingers off. And we are going to let this cool off for a minute, and then we are going to taste it, right? Yeah. 
we have our tasting spoon Ooh, right here, but we're going to put it on here. Saucer. Put me up. All right. Well, here, I'll hook me up first. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Wait. Oh, we could have just traded. Oh, here. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Look. That's probably too much, actually. That's probably like two bites. Spoonful. Okay. Spoonful, not a plateful. Remember? Mm -hmm. Let me try this. Yay. <laughs> okay, don't do this. Well, it is all zero sugar, but um, I'll just do a little taste. And let's be honest, we are we're at the eight ounce phase, right? So mm -hmm. um, we can definitely handle eight ounces. Let me try the pumpkin first. Really? So this will cool off. Of I don't know. I want to try the turkey Ooh. first. I'm gonna burn That's my good. mouth. I'll try the turkey. First. I like the pumpkin. It is good. Mm -hmm. Let's try. So. The most recent version of this that was made was by my family, so it was not the zero sugar. Oh, that would be a great mousse. You cannot tell that that's healthy. I know. At all. It's very good. At all. It tastes so good. So, so good. Mm. And it's good. look at this. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Listen, what do you have for Thanksgiving, right? Um... What do you take to the table? Right. Um, if you are, you know, a little ways out and you want to share with us some tips and tricks, we want to hear. We, we care right. about you. Right. Um, I might not know you personally, but I do care about you. Um, mm -hmm. Both of us are super passionate about helping people on this journey. Sometimes we can get called mean because we are honest, right? I, I have been called the food police, but... She's you know, honest. I'm honest. She is honest. I'm upfront about what you should and should not do because, you know, I want you to have a successful journey. And I say this all the time to patients. I want you to be successful. And, you know, I want you to lose weight and get to your goal weight and maintain your weight. It's a lifestyle. And yeah. sometimes people don't have accountability. And sometimes people will tell you, well, if you want to eat that turkey dressing, you go right ahead. Right. It'll be all right. You can start over tomorrow. And I am not. They might tell you eat a whole plate of dressing. I will not and you tell you that. Tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you <laughs> that either. And I'm going to tell you because from experience, right. carbs lead to wanting more carbs. Right. Um, and that le eating carbs leads to wanting sugar because it is the same mm -hmm. with our body. And so anyway, share with us. Yes. What you want, because we do care about you. That is the right. whole reason we're here. That's why we do what we do. Right. Um, we do care about you, and we want to help you. We want to share maybe what you have with other people. Right. Um, we want to learn something new, right? right. We're both always wanting right. something new to right. try. And um, so, so reach out. Drop us a comment. Uh, send us an email. Send us a link um, to a recipe. Yeah, drop a link in here in the recipe. Yeah. I mean, in the in the comments here but um listen i think we passed this taste test Yum. this is good i'm gonna yes. just go ahead and tell y'all that we'll put the these ingredients down here yes. um, because uh this is great and then um listen the biggest thing is if you do mess up start over start over forgive yourself and move over. i just said i'm not going to tell you to eat a whole plate of dressing and then move on mm -hmm. i'm not going to tell you that's okay but if it happens then just start over. Right. Um, it may make it harder for you to start over, right? But just start over. At the end of the day, it's doable. It is doable. And the most important thing is to enjoy yourself. Um, enjoy yourself. Enjoy your family. Right. Enjoy your time. Learn to have a healthy relationship with foods mm -hmm. so that you can enjoy them too. Now my mm -hmm. stomach's gurgling because <laughs> I'm hungry. I hiccup. I only have one bite. <laughs> I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah. So, but we do want to hear from you. So drop us a comment, like I said, send an email. Um, and listen, from on behalf of our NBC family, right? Yes. All of us at NBC, uh, Sarita and I, backwards from that, Sarita and I, um, and all of us at NBC, we do want to wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy your time with your family and eat lots of good food. Or not lots, but try some. As much as you should. Right, right. So try yummy things if you're in the place where you can. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. So bye friends. Bye. 
If you have any questions or want to share your bariatric weight loss journey, you can call or text us at 480-999-4826 or send an email to podcast at mexicobariatriccenter.com. You can also follow Mexico Bariatric Center on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Keep in mind, these are the opinions of the host. The views represented do not reflect or define the values of Mexico Bariatric Center. This podcast is sponsored by Emerge Bariatrics and Mexico Bariatric Center. Please visit MexicoBariatricCenter.com for more information.